what is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm going to be showing you the latest Corvus OS based on Android 13 and the version is VT 5.1 you can say the name is Deja Vu and this is the 23rd November 2022 official build and right now there is only the GApps variant that's why I love it because I always try to flash GApps included variant and this is the one I have flashed and if you guys are wondering how to actually flash this ROM the flashing guide will be present in the description you shouldn't worry about it and this ROM is decrypted by default so there is mentioned that you do not need to flash DFE separately but of course I did flash the DFE separately but that did not make any issues for me at least. Let me jump into the settings panel this is how it looks like you will get the device settings right here and if you scroll right you will get the Corvus settings now in the settings panel this looks very interesting and of course if you tap here you will see the Corvus updater and if you open this Raven disk you will find this updater kind of let me go back from here let me show you the about phone section that's present on the top and inside here we get the android version so you will get the android 13's easter egg they look beautiful as you can see we have multiple emojis and they are pretty random let me go back we get the november security patch right out of the box that's great and we have the stock kernel as the 4.14 bullex kernel and here the Linux state is showing as enforcing and here we get the build number and the system settings are present in the bottom so let me just jump into it here i have enabled developer options you can disable it if you want in the gestures we have the system navigation gestures in the settings of it we have the pill length customization but there is no thickness customization for the pill bar yet and we have the dead zone and stuff the ime button space and the haptic feedback so i to invoke assistant everything is there also we do get the two button and three button navigations let me go back we have the one-handed mode that works fine and we have the quick torch then we have the swipe to take screenshot and this one is actually working fine let me just show you we have the share edit and the delete option let me scroll down we have the enable advanced restart option right here pretty simplistic and you will see there is a little bit difference in this back button from other rooms it is actually a button it looks like so let me just go back from here and we also have the pop-up camera settings and in here we have the camera calibration option if you want to calibrate the front motorized camera you can do that we also have the pop-up camera sound effect the front camera raise dialog and stuff and the camera led you can disable if you want now let me talk about the home screen a little bit this is how it looks like and the home screen looks good we have the quick step launcher present by default here and on this particular launcher there are amazing amount of customizations and the settings of it we have the home screen app drawer and reasons like in these tabs if you just swipe like this you will switch the home screen settings this actually looks different and beautiful i would say and we have the lock layout the show icon labels on desktop and we have the show google app double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen and the google search bar option is there accelerated dog or search bar then we have the show hot seat background and if you scroll to the next one that is the app drawer customization we do have the suggestion disabling option then we have the show icon labels in drawer all apps themed icons and we have the icon size font size row height and even the background opacity changing option and in the recents we have again the background opacity changing option then the enable haptic feedback option and even the memory info and we have this taskbar option for some reason if you want to enable that by the way in the recents this is how it looks we have the screenshot option then the clear one app option then clear all the apps option this is a icon basically and we have another one that is the google lens searching option and here you will see on the top right of the screen it will show your ram usage so right now it is using 1.3 gb of ram out of 6 gb and this is how it looks and we have the other clock widget and stuff everything is working fine the animation as you can see is working fine to the left of the home screen we get the google's discover page and swiping on it or sliding on it just works i mean scrolling is working perfectly fine swiping up will get to the app drawer you can search for any particular app swiping down will get to the notification or the quick setting panel and here let me tell you that in the light theme the quick setting panel stays light like this in white theme and if you turn on the dark theme of course the whole quick setting panel will turn dark including with the settings panel we have this always on display toggling option and you can toggle it on or off from here there is no always on display charging kind of option here and here we have the descending brightness mode and stuff i mean the high brightness mode and we have the nearby shared the sound toggle data saver and the screen recording is also there you can record the device audio and microphone audio at the same time if you want we have the battery saver do not disturb extra dim heads up fps info and this fps info looks like this once you enable it as you can see by the way the screen is running at 60 hertz not like 72 hertz or 90 hertz do not expect those here and we have the battery saver hotspot and we have the night light the auto rotate flashlight wi-fi bluetooth that's a toggle and here in the bluetooth toggle this is how it appears and definitely i like this animation and i have connected to this bluetooth device and here if you are noticing on the quick settings panel it will show the battery stats 
even here it will show you the Bluetooth battery stats and in the series bar 2 it shows that. Also in the wallpapers and styles this is how it looks you can change the wallpapers from here and there is a one device wallpaper and there are the raven walls too these are the Corvus OS wallpapers you can say they look beautiful. I have been using a Corvus OS wallpaper which is this one and there are the pixel wallpapers if you want to use those you can and in here we have 16 colors for the wallpaper colors and even basic colors are there 16 in numbers too and we have the dark theme the themed icons and there is the upgrade section you can change the upgrade up to 6 by 6 and we have the system icons you can change it between these many options there are a plethora of options I would say even the fonts you can actually see which fonts are which and you can apply it from right here in the wallpapers and styles now let's talk about the cameras over here well the stock camera here is this one this is the lineage os kind of camera and this is not something that you may enjoy because as you can see this shows 1x but doesn't do anything if i just bring it like this it goes to the scan if i just try to zoom out in the video section this is how it looks we get this bar and of course you can zoom it in but you cannot really switch lenses i would say and here let me actually show you we have the settings just like this we have this mic on or mic off option and we have the 1080p, 4K, 480p and even 720p options are there for the video settings. This is a basic camera I would say. The shutter speed is good. Let me just take a picture. As you can see, it took the picture already. And here, talking about the quality, the quality is good. No issues at all. It takes the picture normally, no problems. And even with this, you can switch to the front camera. And as you can see, this is how the front camera looks. You can increase the exposure just like this with this slider if you want to but yeah overall this is a decent like camera present by default here but i'm not a fan of it here i have installed a unix z cam and this one is actually working fine we have this 2x telephoto zooming option this is the lens actually the telephoto lens and even the ultra wide angle lens which is the 0.6x1 that too is working fine here as you can see we can shoot up to 60 fps over here and the frame rates are pretty fine and here let me just switch to the night sight option it should be working perfectly fine and you can even switch the lenses from there now in the portrait mode the front camera is also working there is that zoom a little bit and yeah it should take proper pictures and even i have installed uh, gcam go and with this one as you can see it is working fine so yeah even with this gcam go it takes proper pictures and let me just take a quick one let's just allow it and overall the quality is great no problems whatsoever that i have faced so yeah, you can install your Gcams and stuff, but of course there is no MIUI camera or ANX camera present by default here. Now let's talk about one more thing that is the like locking and unlocking. Well, you can double tap in any blank area and it will make the phone sleep. But here, if I try to unlock, as you can see, it is unlocking fine with the finger scanner as I have the always on display turned on. Even double tap to wake works. But then again, if you have set up the phrase unlock, it will try to use the face unlock all the time. This is what I do not like. I could not really turn this option off because there is no option like that. Let me actually show you. If I just double tap, as you can see, it starts using the face unlock. This actually is happening right now. And here from the always on display, yes, I can use the finger scanner. It does not pop out the front camera if it detects the proper fingerprint. But here, if I have the always on display turned off, this is where it gets like really weird. As you can see, I double tap and it starts to use the face unlock. So I would say if you are someone who can live without the face unlock, just don't set up the face unlock. That's how it won't pop out the front camera all the time. So yeah, like, let me just put the phone. Okay. So right now it's stuck. Look at this. I don't know why these things are happening. Just could not open front camera and try calibrating the motor. So yeah, there is that kind of bug. I would say it shows that message that it's not able to pop out the front camera right now it's doing that but if i try to use the fingerprint scanner when i have the face unlock setup let me show you a double tap i tap the fingerprint scanner even still it opens the front camera why it happens i don't know but let me just turn off the face unlock for now as you can see there is that skip lock screen option but even disabling this will not fix that problem i just disable that and right now if i just double tap and double tap to wake again as you can see it pops out the front camera this is a weird problem i would say i did not expect from corvus waste like this but yeah maybe it will be fixed in the future updates let me just delete the face unlock module right now so that i can show you the finger scanner kind of speed properly from the normal lock screen and yep it unlocks let me try with this finger and yeah it unlocks just look at the speed of the unlocking right now i just tap the finger scanner and it unlocks no issues whatsoever with the finger scanner unlocking speed. 
The FOD is very fast and snappy. It is a really blazing fast experience for the FOD, I would say. Now there is no app lock as of right now, you need to keep that in mind. Like in the security, if you go into the more options, we have the smart lock, but again, no app lock options. Also in the screen lock settings, we do not have any quick unlock and the quick unlock is not enabled by default. So yeah, I do miss that quick unlock option. Now let me show you the customizations. Well, they are there in the Corvus settings. And from here, if you go into the theming, we have the custom color, white balance, and we have this chroma factor, etc. And here we have the status bar icon manager and in here we'll get the headset, Bluetooth, etc. kind of icons. And we have the show notification count, the colored icons, I disabled it, I think. And we have the 4G icon, then the roaming indicator, show data disabled icon. The clock position, you can choose right, left or center. And we have the AMPM style and stuff. And there is that background chip, if you're noticing on that clock right there, looks dope, I would say. And we have the clock font size, the double tap to sleep on the status bar. And we have the quick setting panel customization. In here, we have the clock again for the quick setting panel. And we have the brightness reader. You can keep it on show always or never show or show when expanded. And I have it set to bottom and you can change the position of it right now. As you can see, it always shows on the bottom, really convenient for me at least. And by the way, I did not show you the power menu, the advanced reboot, I mean, and you can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from right here. There is also the auto brightness icon if you're looking for that. And we have the show detailed data usage if you're using mobile data. Of course, vault calling and stuff should be working fine here. In the lock screen, we have the lock screen shortcuts, double tap to sleep and the media cover art, blood amount for the lock screen. But then again, there is no FOD icon picker or FOD icon animation and stuff. Those things are simply missing. We have the re-ticker option right here. We have some more customization for the notification. Inside buttons, we have the show volume panel on the left side and show brightness right on in volume panel. Yes, it is working, but it's a little bit weird, I would say. That's why I did not enable it. And here, this is how the volume panel looks, by the way. You can expand it just like this. And the animation definitely looks beautiful. And you can like actually switch the output device from here. It looks dope. I would say the animation, I mean of it appearing and here you can put the phone into vibrate or silent from right here of course normally that's pretty much it about the customization not much is present i would say and here we have the battery settings this is how it looks but it does not have the battery stats the battery charging cycle current battery capacity design battery capacity those are simply missing we cannot even see the battery temperature here that's pretty disappointing i would say when in roms like evolution x we will get to see everything but yeah maybe it will be added in the future updates but we do have the battery manager the battery percentage and even the battery optimization option but i have to mention there is no battery icon changing option for the status bar like there is no big dotted circle or big circle kind of battery icons or even landscape right or left those kind of icons are simply missing we'll get the normal battery icon over here now let's talk about the battery life and i have tested the battery with the aku battery app and with that, I have got about eight hours and 45 minutes of screen on time. That's again a huge amount of number, but you have to remember that I have replaced the battery from service center. So this is a brand new battery you are looking at. And of course, original battery and inside health, you cannot really see the battery health, I guess. Yeah, it doesn't show the battery health because right now you have to charge below 15%. I did not do that. But yeah, overall, I would say my battery health is about 96, 97%. So yeah, overall, I did not have any issues with the battery life. You can check out the screen off and the combined use so you can get an idea about the standby drain. No issues of any kind of standby drain overnight. And I have used a 33 watt fast charger and with that, the fast charging has been working amazingly well. It just charges blazing fast, almost 4000 mAh all the time. So yeah, no issues whatsoever with fast charging. Let's jump into the sound and vibration. This is how it looks. We have the media ring call, etc. volume controls. And if you scroll down, we have the vibration and haptics, live caption, and we have the charging sound and vibration. And we have the me sound enhancer over here too. And you get plethora of presets for these. I have been using it with a youth edition. And you can choose the presets from here. And we have the enable hi-fi option as well. And the sound quality overall via the headphone jack has been great. And we have the intensity customization for the haptic feedback overall in the UI. And we also have a clear speaker option if your speaker sounds muffled, you can definitely use this option. In the display settings, we have this brightness level and the adaptive brightness. By the way, in the lock screen settings, I was trying to find the face unlock kind of thing where there is that swipe up on the lock screen option for the face unlock, but I could not simply find that there is only the skip lock screen option, but disabling it doesn't do anything for the face unlock. That's how it is, but we do have the show device controls and this is for the Google Home controls and stuff. And we have the prevent accidental wake up, always run on info is the always on display. And we have the wake screen for notification if you want to use that. We also have the screen timeout. You can have it up to 30 minutes. We have the dark theme, the override for start. Display size and text option is there. There is also the bold text and high contrast text option right now. 
and the colors are set to saturated but you can of course control the rgb of the screen and we have the prevent accidental wake up here again and we have the double tap to wake the ambient display customizations are also there so pickup is there and it is working i have tested that and we have the custom display and in here we have the dc dimming and the high brightness mode again which is there again in the quick setting panel and in case you are wondering about the drm info yes the drm info stays as l1 so you can stream netflix or amazon prime videos here in 1080p also it passes the safety net test so there should not be any issues while like using banking apps over here right out of the box banking apps should be working fine and overall if you are talking about the performance yes there is some kind of choppiness here and there in scrolling i have noticed that let me actually open twitter and let me scroll just notice this how choppy it feels i don't know why it's happening i have tried to update the app but that didn't do anything this is running at 60 hertz but still just notice the choppiness over here while scrolling i don't know why it happens it should not happen that i can say but yeah this happens actually so if you're someone who scrolls through twitter you might be hitting this wrong Otherwise, overall, for normal usage and stuff, for normal scrolling, there should not be any major problems, I would say. But here again, in Play Store 2, just notice that is that choppiness. It's not gone. So it's not only with the Twitter app, I would say. So except for these, this is a good ROM, I would say. And here are the Android 10 Geekbench score with a CPU stress test on this particular build. To get you an idea about the overall performance of this ROM. So give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, share this video with your friends if you want them to know about the latest Corvus ways based on Android 13 VT 5.1 I guess on the Redmi K20 Pro and subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Until next time, please give this video a thumbs up. Have a great day.